are just waiting. Hello, everyone. And here is another block chat with Denis Petrovicic and Makrem Hani. Today, we'll be talking about the elephant in the room. You know, when people are talking, um, uh, I'm, I'm playing with a rubber band all day today. I don't know why. Um, today, hi, how are you, Dennis? Oh, you were <laughs> there on with the rubber band idea. Yeah, I thought I with rubber band. maybe jump in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's going the wrong direction. This guy. <laughs> okay. So everyone talks about Dennis. Everyone talks about property management. So look, we tokenize. That's the front end of what we do. Okay, that's yeah. how you raise money. That's how you have a collaborative economy. That's how you engage people. That's how you. Uh, that's how you make sense on a front end. But then behind the marketplace and behind all of those funds uh, that are being raised, there's property. And property is uh, very heavy on management. Actually, one of the biggest places or, or, or areas to make money or lose money in property, and that's what distinguishes great property investors from average property investors probably, or that's one of the things that distinguish great property investors from average property investors, it's the management side. So... It's a very important thing because much of the risk lies there. And by the way, we're, we're, we're shooting a spotlight, guys, with uh, Daniel. Daniel is heading risk. We were supposed to shoot it yesterday. We had some connectivity issues, so we didn't. But I promise you that that spotlight, every single person wants to see for two reasons. One, you'll get a different angle from someone who comes from an institutional background who heads risk and have traded derivatives and have been on giant transactions. Uh, for uh, big organizations. And then to you, you understand how we look at risk and how we mitigate risk and how we understand risk. Because to us, it's very important that we uh, manage risk because there's always risk in everything we do. But managing it and mitigating it um, puts you on the, on the right track. If, if there is a possibility of you having an accident, you don't stop driving. Uh, you just... Um, have a seat belt and probably have some insurance. So the whole idea about that spotlight is risk. So I, I would want everyone to see it. But today we're talking about an element of where risks uh, come or one of the places that risks come and one of the places of success. So in our business, Dennis, we have a, we tokenizing, yeah? We're tokenizing property. People are buying into this property. They have here, we, we have achieved uh, uh, the the, most efficient method of passing value through the funnel from property to uh, individual and investor, from asset class to end investor. Today, in generally, in collaborative investments, the conventional way, if you go into a fund, there's usually so many tranches that limit the transmission of value in its entirety. So what happens is you put 100 from here, what comes out of the other side is 70 or 75 or 60 or 80 or whatever it is. What we're trying to do is get it nearest to 100. And I believe we've done a great job at that. And then you would see other block chats and understand how did we do so. Today, we want to talk about the generating of value. So here is the investor. Here is the property, the real estate asset. And behind it, behind the scenes, is all the hard work managing this real estate asset. And that's the back end of every marketplace. That's the back end of every single party trying to um, manage a, a collaborative investment effectively, efficiently, and sustainably and successfully. Dennis, what's your views on, on, on that? First, how important is property management in your opinion? And and you're a you're someone you're an investor in property. You don't come from a property background, but you're a property investor, and you manage your own properties yourself, which is which is very important. And I always say that that element there is very important because you have a different feel to property and what does it take to manage, and and then you appreciate it more. What's what's your take on this? Well, I I actually um, <clears throat> I wanted to. Um be invested in property in a way where I can kind of have the whole spectrum of the investment from being the investor and as well managing the, the property and the property had to be of a, of a certain size so I can kind of really experience the whole 
the whole basically life cycle of the property um, as an investor, uh, as a ma as a property manager as well. Um, so so that's how I chose my my real estate investments um, because of that. Also because of Bloxburg, because you know <laughs> you need to know as much as possible about the subject that you are uh, involved in, even if that's just you know tech part. Um, that's kind of the I would say the front side but you need to understand what's happening in the back. So, um, yeah, I think property management is one of the key factors of, um, in the end, uh, having revenues <laughs> and, uh, and out of those revenues, having profits, right? Because, um, you can, you can essentially be a very, um, theoretically good, uh, property manager. <laughs> but be spending just over uh over the top um and uh if you're not managing the property that's gonna create expenses further down the line as well so you know when when you're entering an investment i think at least for me it's very important to um kind of even in, if the capital expenditure is higher just fix those things that during the lifetime of the investment are probably going to cause some issues um, and might create a cost because, for instance, if I need to change the heating, uh, major heating parts uh, in an investment uh, after seven years, um, and my target was to hold it for 10 years, you know, I'm creating a big expenditure um, three years before I'm exiting the investment. And what's going to happen is perhaps the buyer on the other side wants to do something else with that property and that I'm never going to recoup that or that's money lost. Right. Um, so, so that's kind of one of the, one of the things that you think of when you are investing in property. Uh, and then there's the, the regular maintenance. If you don't maintain, if you don't spend on, I don't know, again, uh, heating in, uh, seats and inspection, for instance, uh, yeah, it makes it makes a big difference in Dubai. Whenever you talk heating, I feel yeah. you here. <laughs> we should maintain our heating systems twenty four seven yeah. all year round. Yeah, I was actually thinking of opening a, a company in Dubai just for that purpose. I think there's a huge market. There's no competition at all, really. There's nobody doing it. So, you know. <laughs> and actually, you've mentioned you've mentioned maintenance. You've mentioned, by the way facility management and property management is moving with technology with the introduction of IoT, AIoT. Uh, it's moving from um, a preventative or, uh, or, or a proactive to preventative. And then currently it's predictive. It's them noticing patterns of what happens and how it happened. I was on a panel recently um, mm -hmm. with uh, a very smart individual who knows his business very well in UAE and they're in facility management and property management. And they were talking about the kind of technology that they're implementing today. And it's amazing. And it works perfectly for a circular economy. When you look at the property from the real estate 6.0 methodology or theory of um, the whole cycle, uh, it col contributes hugely when it's managed right and when it's recorded right and when it's monitored right. So, but it's also very important to manage the tenants relationship right. It's also very important to manage the lender's relationship uh, right and, and what's the borrowing terms and all of those. And all of those need specialists to deal with. So today in our world, when uh, projects specifically, because we are we are uh, categorized. Uh, although we are an infrastructure project, so we 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 are a technology project. However, we are a company that uh, uh, that creates things and sell it. Yes, this thing, be it um, infrastructure, you need a tunnel to pass from point A to point B in the physical world. You need uh, our. Uh, tunnel to pass from point A to point B in the digital world whenever you're talking tokenization or transmission of value over distributed ledger technology or blockchain, which is one of it. The, the idea behind it being is, yes, we are marked like everyone else, and it seems like it's a curse today, specifically those days, that we are a crypto-related project. And yes, actually, 
um, we are uh, our backend is a DAO. Uh, we we are we are a project which is Web three driven, and we have that that target. But um, let's redefine uh, a project uh, with what it does. Let's redefine a project regardless of. Um, what is the tool it uses? So if we use blockchain or we use uh, um, a conventional old method of, of doing things, would it make a big difference if the underlying is a property and if the underlying asset is managed the way that is prudently supposed to be managed? What do you think? Does it, should it make a difference? Um, I think it doesn't really make a difference, right? It does a You're... positive difference maybe, yeah? Or it should do a positive. I think, I think what if you're doing things right, my my guess is that because of the the qualities of blockchain, um, which creates like a, a permanent track record, right, of things, um, and if you're managing, if you have great product, then you have increasing demand. And I think as a property manager or a property owner or an investor, um, you know that it's much harder to acquire quality supply than there is potential demand on the market for that supply. So I think a lot of times we, we deal with the, with the question, you know, oh, the hard part is getting the, the demand. But I'm not really think, I don't think that's the, the case because if you have the right asset, want, everyone wants to want buy to, quality, to have cold quality investments, you know, um, there's way more of them <laughs> than people who, who, who hold access to quality investments. So, you know, there's, there might be discrepancies in, in different times of what's more available than one or the other, but Essentially, I think, you know, you look at the city, you look at, you know, some heavily managed property like Airbnbs, for instance, short-term rentals are, you know, there, it's a high involvement in management. Heavy management, right? yes. Yes, yeah. right. Um, it's like running a hotel in the end, right? Yeah. And if you as an investor, if you also have a good team that manages that, that's going to create, you know, much more. Uh, in terms of profit, profits to you, then if you outsource this to somebody else, then the profits are going to go to probably that management company, right? So you need to structure this when you are thinking of tokenization. You need to structure this so that it makes more money to you, so that it makes more money to your followers. Because you're, what if you're you know how to do it, followers, right? If you know how to do it, if you don't know how to do it right, pass it on. I always say uh, I wouldn't manage an Airbnb. I don't wear the hat of a hotelier when I come in in the morning. And that's a hospitality-driven business. It's an experience-driven business. I give it to the pros in it if I want to do it, um, when it makes sense to do it. So the, the, the whole idea behind it, can I call us, Dennis, we're dealing with one of the most conventional businesses in the world. So you can call us one of the most conventional businesses in the world. The difference between us and Oracle, Oracle provides database for uh, people who are trying to run uh, property software, isn't it? Uh, we, provide, uh, we provide infrastructure for people who are trying to uh, raise for property project, be it uh, a ready property, be it uh, a non-ready property, does not matter. It can happen in a Web 2 uh, dimension. It can happen in a Web 3 dimension. The difference is not the property. The difference is the toolkit that you are using on top. The difference is that um, that that uh, uh, offering and the way you offer it's similar to you uh, buying over uh, the phone and paying by credit card over the phone or uh, signing a an indemnity by fax and sending it. It's similar to that. Can uh, is that the right definition for it or description for it, Dennis? It's it's a sales channel in one on one side. It's a sales channel, and on the other side, it's um, it, it's a new experience. I would say a new experience of 
both sides, investors and um, and investment managers, let's say, let's call them, or uh, you know, those providing the product, basically, the suppliers here, um, and and the middleman, because in the end, the marketplace operator it acts in a way as a middleman that creates uh, a safe environment for both parties to engage, even though from a contractual basis, the engagement is direct, as we said in the beginning, so. I, I think this is like um, you can't really in the end fundamentally change how property is managed, right? But you can change how it is invested in. Yes. And the organization is kind of changing the, 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 the way how we invest in property. Even that, even that will evolve. Okay? But not but... how we manage it, right? That part. Uh, and... Maybe, maybe. Look, I, 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 I've seen. You think there's, ago, what do you think? Ago. Yeah, I've okay. seen a few days ago something that surprised me. You know, we we always <laughs> should be learning. Uh, I I've seen something that surprised me, and I didn't think that that was possible. And okay. um, I, I've met a few guys, and what they're doing is they have a, a few buildings that are fully managed digitally. Yeah. And I was shocked, and I saw the numbers, and I saw the um, uh, client uh, uh, feedback, and I and. It was amazing because they created such a smooth, seamless experience. Um, but uh, I believe they're doing one thing very well, which property management companies usually fail at here and there. There is no compromise within their uh, process. There's no cost saving or, or uh, uh, um, end uh, uh, cutting here or there. What they're doing uh, is they're not cutting any corners. Every single part of the process is done properly. What they save money on is the efficiency of the process. And what they save money on is the marketing because they don't need to market whenever they've marketed an acquired clientele who will come to them continuously and continue to refer people to them. So they're doing an yeah. amazing job. And I believe the tenant transaction part is, I think, the one that will most probably touch web three the, the the first right because it's again it's transaction of value and you know those you can guys make... are those guys are still web two however yeah. Yeah. the whole experience is like seamless they don't have human beings involved they do have human beings who cleans the apartment is a human being who maintains it is a human being but there's there's no that that human interaction between a tenant and a any member of their team Okay, it's all done online. They pay online, they collect online. Everything is seamless. And I believe this is a major part of the whole cycle of tokenization and making sense of property. So that's increased efficiency and having efficiency pass through the poles, isn't it? But the, just one, one question to the seamless digital experience, just one question is, uh, when a new tenant is inquiring about it, about the property, right? Um, it, I guess it's like you mentioned apartments. So I guess it's like the long term or mid term uh, stays. Um, so <clears throat> are they uh, doing a viewing or is that also no human online? intervention? It's all digitally driven. Okay. So you inquire so about the apartment, you, you can come and. How does that experience, experience look like? Is it like, do I book something? Uh, you Sorry, book a viewing. You book a you viewing. You book a viewing. You go there. You, you check the apartment, apartment yourself. You and that's it. The nobody there. It guides you to the apartment. You okay. tap your phone with the door to the door. It okay. opens the door, and then the okay. app on your phone will guide you through and will tell you about that property while you're going. And you have QR codes on the sides. You oh, can okay. scan any of those QR codes, and it tells you yeah, more about it. Exactly. Okay. 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 And to be honest, man, you don't need even the viewing because the the quality of their three D of every property is amazing, and and they tell you everything from view. They've done their work properly, and I, I believe this will help you. For example, coming to Dubai or Abu Dhabi, or me going to Ljubljana to pick the perfect property for myself, even before reaching there. You pay online, you book it online, you do everything online. Hmm. That's really good. I mean, it's it's like I think the the, the hospitality kind of sector is uh, 
especially with the short-term rentals, it's kind of already went into that direction. But I guess this is all going as well towards long-term stays as well and, and so forth. And so, um, yeah. Yep. But and in the end, this if this brings efficiency, if this kind of uh, thing brings efficiency and it creates, let's say, um, shorter periods of of no tenants right so of no ten, of vacancy less vacancy so, yeah, yeah. decrease it vac vacancy if you know it's fully occupied because for instance what the type of properties i have um they have zero vacancy so but because of the process of how you're lucky I'm, there now you're lucky I, there it's not only you're lucky there <laughs> yeah because i choose to invest in a non-binary property if, if you invest in an apartment it's either you have somebody or you don't right and even if you have 10 apartments you know changing um and a, a tenant in an apartment you know it's it's kind of it's 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 a different game um and and i i rent out rooms for students uh, into properties and that's that's a totally different thing so but, you're renting out student housing in a property market that has shortage of student housing Exactly. well positioned well located and well taken care of um so that's the game yeah that, that's 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 the game but still property management is very essential this is what we're saying here and what we're saying also is behind the marketplace behind the web3 experience behind the buying into regardless of how you buy into the property it can be you buying a token it can be you buying a share in a property it can be you buying directly into the property the whole property regardless of how it is that part is very essential so you need to be aware that the back end is a property and behind the property is management of this property and that is essential for you to understand um that's essential for you to understand to know three things one the uh, what business are we in we're providing infrastructure to people who are doing exactly that we're providing the front end of it and the tools to do so two um, what business are we in? We are a project that is dealing with one of the most conventional businesses in the world, and we are modernizing the front end of it, the funding part of it, the, the money raise of it. This is what we're doing. We're modernizing the money raise of the one of the most conventional businesses in the world. So if someone of you today says, I want to invest in a conventional asset, not in a futuristic asset, voila, here you have it. Three, and that's very important, it's very important to understand the risks in that from a back end. When you invest in a property with a marketplace operator, how the marketplace operator is managing the back end. Again, they don't need to be managing it themselves. Maybe they have created a, a, an agreement with one of the best property managers in your city or in that city or in town, and maybe that uh, manager is doing a great job or maybe they have an in-house team or maybe they used to be a property management company and it made sense for them to add this on top so regardless of who they are it's very important to understand the management aspect of the property and i believe by the way dennis we were talking about this a few days ago at fibri with the yo and the guys it's very important to standardize and neutralize um, and, and standardization and neutralization of everything from methodology to terminology to uh, all aspects of property management and property transaction is key. Because then when you say that a, a property management company is managing uh, with an efficiency of A+, plus, you know that A+, plus is the same all through. It's not that A plus in, in Slovenia means it's a great A plus in, um, uh, in, in, let's say, Lebanon means the best available. So it's average. Uh, you know, you, you, you neutralize, you uh, for, formalize a, a certain kind of understanding which is standardized among markets and among property categories and categories of the asset class. And that way, your ability to make people understand the management side is there at a higher level. And, and that's something, probably this block chat is to our partners as well as to um, everyone in our community and everyone interested in property tokenization because people should understand that this is the core. Everything we're doing, we're working around the core.
So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get another channel, a new channel um, to uh, fund or to root even existing channel through a more efficient channel towards the property. So if you have a bag of value that you want to fill, if you used to fill it through 10 channels, be it uh, uh, direct investment, be it through uh, REITs, be it through a fund, be it through a private equity placement, regardless of how it is, or directly, what we're doing is through a collaborative economy approach, what we're able to do is root all of those kinds of funding into one channel that goes into the pot of value that we were talking about, which is the property, and thus generating more value and not generating more value because it generates more value. It's just that more value is swimming through the funnel to reach you. It means that exchange of value is a fire efficiency. Um, what, what do you have to say, uh, Dennis, uh, more about uh, that part? Because I believe that uh, we talk about it every meeting. Uh, we talk about property management. We talk about um, uh, properties themselves. We talk about uh, new properties that we're acquiring. I believe we acquired a new property uh, uh, that, that have been added. Uh, it's an Airbnb. Can you tell us more about it? Um, well, um... Which which Airbnb? Sorry, <laughs> but uh, we have. Uh, Didn't we add an Airbnb the, two days ago? Yeah, we received uh, an inquiry, so it's uh, it's, it's in our due yet. diligence. It's it's on our due diligence process. Yes, um, okay. but um, a lot of times, yeah, a lot of times, uh, if we're talking about uh, the property management side, it's uh, you need to understand how. How properties are managed in a certain part uh, market and specific to a, a certain vertical of assets, of course, right? Um, property management it might be part of the offering of the marketplace operator, but it doesn't need to be because a marketplace operator can actually offer tokenization as a service to property to landlords who manage properties them on their, you know, however they manage, right? Uh, the property. So it doesn't need to be like a unified, even though it makes it much, much easier for a marketplace operator if they simplify the structure they have. If they say, okay, you know what, we're going to have a tokenization marketplace. And for the first two years, we're going to manage all the properties, we're going to acquire them, uh, secure financing and tokenize them, uh, etc. And why? Because it's less scalable, maybe, uh, for the first two years. But and we want to create... create a module, maybe, that, that we, we ask others to follow afterwards when we scale. Exactly. But we, we as a marketplace, we're going to become an authority on the Czech market uh, or on the German market or on the Spanish market or, you know, the UK market. We want to become an authority so that we standardize how tokenized real estate is presented, um, like you said, creating a, a way for people to understand what is A+, plus, <laughs> right? And, and kind of not, and then they can drive the market forward with it. And um, I think this is kind of important. A lot of times we see teams who wish to create a very, very highly scalable model but they then, but they um, forget that it might be more wise, uh, or it, it might be wiser to um, have a initially maybe a less scalable model, but that creates over the top investment products, because that's gonna, as as we said initially, there's probably less investable property than one might think. It's not like any, any deal is a great deal. Yes. And with this, I want to tell you, um, modules are very important and the processes are very important. Uh, you always remember McDonald's when you say processes. It's not that we are advocating for everyone to go eat McDonald's tonight. Um, however, one of the most successful businesses in the world, I like it because first it's real estate driven. The back end of it is real estate as well. However, McDonald's also started everything by doing things that have been done for so long 
in a slightly more consistent, more efficient manner, starting by the ice cream, which has no ice and has no cream. With this thought, Dennis, would you like to say anything else to our community? I didn't know that McDonald's ice cream doesn't have no ice. No way. No, no way. No, really? Have yeah, you ever watched the founder? Um, I actually I didn't, but uh, you mentioned it a couple of times. It made a, a big impression to you, I guess. So look, yeah, <laughs> it does. I don't yeah. like the guy's approach maybe to business or maybe I like it. I don't know. Um, I don't mm -hmm. see myself agree with the part of his business ethic again, or maybe I do. I'm not sure uh, of it. Uh, however, um, it's a success story, which is cool. Definitely, it's made to uh, suit the uh, cinematic uh, uh, setting. However, um, there is so much success in that process. There's so much success in that history. Um, I enjoyed the uh, block chat today. Me as well. Want I wanted to, to uh, conclude this maybe with a, with a question to you, actually, because mm -hmm. a lot of times we address um, real estate investment companies, real estate entrepreneurs, right, um, about using tokenization. But I remember, and we don't have many of this type of inquiries, honestly. We should have more of them, actually. But I guess that the leadership of these companies is not maybe inquiring about tokenization yet of these type of companies. Um, and Or maybe they don't feel that they can champion this market. Um, but we've been talking about property management quite a lot today. Um, uh, that was actually the central theme. Uh, of, so the back end of, of every real estate investment is how you manage property, right? Um, do you feel that there's an opportunity for property management companies to you to be, you know, to champion utilizing, to, you know, tokenization technology and you know, come to the market with such a product. Because in my view, they have access to the, the landlords who are their clients in the end, right? A good question. Two parts of an answer. One, recently I've been chatting with someone that I've, I've chatted uh, coincidentally with around two and a half, three years ago, I don't know one. Um, he was in the region and he was planning to launch a tokenization business. And um, after around two years and a half, he come, connected with me again on LinkedIn and said, do you remember me? We chatted and we really chatted once over Zoom at that time. And But I remember the guy and I said, yes, I remember you. Let's chat again. Um, he eventually opened the business in Canada, didn't open it in, in UAE and the, 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 the region. Um, however, uh, at that time, uh, the business was being sold to a property management company. So a property management company was buying his business because they felt there is value in uh, that. So I, I believe yes. But let me here answer the second part of the question. You know, a few years ago, when anyone used to talk uh, energy saving in a business, it used to be one of those uh, cliches. It used to be one of those uh fun pr stunts to use yeah people used to um come up and say yeah we're all about uh, green and we're all about now everything starts this way until it makes so much viability and financial sense and then it changes isn't it um today um i i deal with a company that that what we provide is we uh, we come to a factory and we assess the amount of electricity they require and through a program in Dubai called Shems Dubai from Dubai government, from Dubai Electricity and Water Authority, we fix a solar plant on their top of university, school or factory for free. They don't pay a penny and we sell them electricity for 40 to 50 percent cheaper than the Dubai Electricity and Water Authority's price. And uh, we, uh, we, we sell them that and we build them through Dubai Electricity and Water Authority. And now they're doing it 
factories and companies and schools and they're doing it. Why? It's not anymore a stunt, a PR stunt. It's something that has commercial viability. So if what we do does have commercial viability, and we believe it does, and we hopefully understand a little bit about what we do. So we, uh, when we believe it does, it, it hopefully a little bit does here or there. And eventually, people will go beyond. To be, today, when people want to talk blockchain in a company, they talk blockchain most of the time, specifically if they're a real estate company, just because they want to be, uh, they want to look as innovators and pioneers to the future. And, and, and in a way or other, it's fun sometimes to look that way. It's fun to, to um, appear that way. It's fun to evolve that way. But then, because it's not yet established, including the whole ecosystem for it, because it's not yet established, eventually people want to put food on the table and companies need to match numbers and hit targets. And what they do is they drift with that. So this becomes or stays the thing in the ether which is running behind them and around them. Eventually, however, the ecosystem will be ready and they will see the efficiency in that uh, system, they, in that process, in that approach. And that will get them to acquire and adopt practices that we're talking about and technology that we're talking about. And some will choose to do it sooner rather than later. But eventually, everyone will end up there if it makes commercial sense and if it has value, uh, driven by value. And I believe and you believe, I'm sure, that it's driven by value and we do add value. And our system and our technology does add value. So I don't see a reason why they don't all subscribe to it. But again, similar to how 60 years ago, when a company used to get a CRM system in, they used to get it just to show their salespeople and that we are advanced. But the usage of that was very low. Today, the usage of CRMs and ERP systems and, and systems that guide a customer experience and, and the uh, um, revenue cycle in a company are so much sure uh, because they made sense and because they affected the business and because the business developed and grew. And we believe that the same will happen on our end. It's just a matter of uh, everyone seeing commercial viability and the ecosystem maturing, which it does and it's doing and it does with time. And it will continue to do. And we need um, not only motivated regulators and motivated uh, enterprises, um, which we have more of by the day. Uh, we need this global competition towards the betterment of humanity, towards the betterment of uh, the, the human interaction with asset classes and with everything beyond that. And still, some will fall, some will stand. Uh, the base that everyone looks at today, and I'm so happy that everyone is going back to fundamentals, or many people are going back to fundamentals and saying real estate and saying, uh, the assets that the, our grandfathers used to trade and the methods that our father, grandfathers used to trade. And I'm so happy about that because we've created a, um, a bridge um, to get you to the other end of the river, exactly to the land that your grandfathers used to plant, yet you're not anymore um, climbing a, um, a, a rope. You're um, sitting comfortably uh, in a car and driving over a bridge. And this is what Block Square's uh, infrastructure and technology is all about. We're providing you with that easy route to exactly what your grandfather owned, but suffered a lot to buy and hold. Dennis? Okay. I think uh, that's a perfect summary um, for this blockchain, I guess. Uh, perfect thought. As I say, it's a it's a, a long answer to a long, complicated answer to a very simple question that should have been answered in two words. Um, <laughs> guys, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, I hope that this block chat benefited you. What we're trying to do is dive deep in every part of the business. As you notice, we're trying to keep it 30 minutes. Sometimes I talk so much, so it reaches 40 minutes like today. <laughs> However, we're trying to keep it 30 minutes because we want to transmit this value to you. We want to discuss everything. We don't want to uh, keep any part, uh, the elephant in the room, hiding. We want to discuss every part and we want to make sure that it's viable to you and to us. 
and eventually it's viable to everyone in our community to be supporting the project and to be supporting uh, block square um, and and what we're doing to be supporting ocean point as well and what we're doing there um everyone is asking about the progress of uh, version uh, 03 uh, for whoever is not please do ask go in check our roadmap um, and check what are we doing, what have we done to date, if you're not asking about where's version 0.3, um, because probably you're not supporting our, com our, our project yet, go in, check it out, and uh, ask us questions. Uh, 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 ask us questions that we hopefully can answer and, and add value uh, to you and our community with. Uh, Dennis, thank you for uh, this uh, evening. It's, what, is yeah. it 7 o'clock now, your time? Uh, yeah something like that it's yeah, that's it's 10 o'clock my time 10 p.m dubai time guys enjoy it thank you so much dennis have fun and <laughs> until the next uh block chat there's two coming that are very important i'll uh, i've told you about one there's another one that's coming with a partner of ours that's very interesting okay you will not see only faces like dennis's and mine um uh, you will you will see some pleasant faces uh, uh, after all and uh, and uh, that partnership is something we're also very uh, very uh, excited about where you are yeah. as well thank you so much have a good evening ciao ciao